Warrington's first grand final leads they've been here more times than possibly some of us would care to remember but Warrington have got three Challenge Cup final successes in the past four years I've got Phil and Brian up here as you would expect as well with Steve and me Phil does that count for anything that Wembley experience I don't think so no they're both sets of players they have a chance to live the dream tonight but to do that they have to play well and we're fortunate we can soak up the atmosphere and enjoy the spectacle and the occasion but the sets of players to stay in the moment and that's pretty difficult with fireworks exploding as you walk out onto the pitch and they're met with a cacophony of sound here from both sets of players you know, that's how you talk about keeping your concentration this is difficult isn't it when you walk out to that as a scene and try and remain focused at the jobs you have to do because for the lead side they have to start well to stand a chance of winning here tonight well, let's just revitalise everybody, because that was one clap of thunder, wasn't it? And that's part of what Phil is talking about, Eddie. You're sitting in there, you're waiting in that tunnel, and you're telling yourself, it's just another 80 minutes, it's just another game in rugby league that I've played all my career and all my life. But then your eyes start telling you differently. You see these big sloping stands, you hear the noise of this crowd, this magnificent crowd, and that starts to get to you, Eddie. You've got to calm yourself back down and refocus. This is the time now that the deep breaths from all the players have a little smile, have a think, and now we got to go to work. Very interesting that Tony Smith was out there in the middle with his players in the last huddle before they line up for the kickoff. And Richard Silverwood, his second grand final. He was here in 2010 in control of Wigan and St. Helens. Well, the match ball was delivered a few minutes ago, and Richard Silverwood now is looking for it. Interesting, Eddie, that every single player that came out did not glance at that trophy once. They know this is an important 80 minutes. And the first 10, 15, as we all know, will be amongst the forwards. It should be a classic. It should be, and Lee Breers gets this grand final of 2012 underway. And Danny Maguire takes the kickoff and falls as he takes it. The tackle is not completed, and Maguire gets up and makes some ground before he reaches Ben Harrison and Stefan Ratchford. Did well to catch that. Lost balance. Westwood zooming down, and he did well again, regaining three. Warrington getting stuck in very early here as Leeds try and work this ball away from their own line and Kylie Lulawai is halted low by Mickey Hyam who was helped out by Simon Griggs and it's Jamie Peacock now, 10 on his back, 10 grand finals for Jamie Peacock. You can see there the Warrington defenders, they're not trying to give him any chance to offload, did well there, Peacock just fumbled it, regained it Delaney gets to his feet, here comes the last tackle to expect the kick, and it's Zach Hardacre, and that was charged down, it bounced off the chest of Ben Harrison, it's six to go for the Leeds Rhinos. A little bit fortunate there, but that's when you want to ride your luck. Interesting to see there that Zach Hardacre took the responsibility for the kick. Normally it would have been on the shoulders of Kevin Sinfield, who's been in superb form. You know, Warrington are the charge down Kings, Eddie. They'll put pressure on the kicker, as do Leeds, but the Wolves are by far the best side and expect a lot of pressure on the kickers, perhaps the reason why they used hard air for early. Well, it's a tremendous start for the Leeds Rhinos because here comes uh, Carl Ablett now. Warrington have not had the ball in their hands yet. And this is the second set of six that Leeds have completed, and it's with Maguire who gives it to Sinfield, he jinks inside, gets the ball away, it's with Peacock, he can't kick it, he shouldn't kick it, and Warrington know that, and they trap him in possession, that's the turnover. Not the best end to what was a perfect start. There's a charge out, I'm not so sure, you can see there that Ben Harrison lifted the arm, that indicated to Richard Silverwood, the official, that that was back to six, but that was a real mess up there by the Rhinos. Brian McDermott will not be happy with that. They are so good, exponent that kick. 
Absolutely, Steve. Oh, important to get your kick away early in the game. The battle I'm looking for tonight is the left edge of Warrington against the right edge of, of, of the Leeds Rhinos. Kevin Sinfield, one of the greatest players of the Super League era, has got two of the greatest athletes in the current Super League outside of him, Ben Jones, Bishop, and Callum Watkins. They're up against Waterhouse, Atkins, and, and Riley. Keep an eye on it. Great run from Griggs, and Bailey couldn't touch him because he was stood offside at the play of the ball. So Warrington now are 30 metres away from the Leeds Laurent line. It's with Briers who gets it away to Ben Westwood, one of the three nominees for the Man of Steel award this year. He plays the ball to Stefan Ratchford. Briers will hoist it high and wide to the left-hand side. Ben Jones Bishop's underneath it, has missed it. It's come down for Riley. It's going to be six to go, I think, for Warrington here. He's held up over the line anyway. Beautiful and it's a zero kick. tackle, as indicated by Richard Silverwood. Beautiful kick by Lee Briers there. Anticipated. Putting a lot of pressure on the young winger. Couldn't take it, they did well to keep him out. Riley, boy, this is real pressure now for the Rhinos. It is, because here comes Trent Waterhouse on the charge. First tackle, and it's with Hyam. Hyam gets it infield to Myler. Myler's throw! First try of the grand final! Richie Myler for Warrington. He won a grand final with Salford in 2008. It's slightly bigger. She's trying to fry here tonight. A try against Hull in the playoffs. Richie Myler has given Warrington the dream start. You've got to take your chances. And it all came about by the kick from the standoff Lee Breers. Put the pressure on Ben Jones Bishop. Couldn't take it. Landed eventually into Chris Riley's arms. Not a good attempt. Under a lot of pressure by Riley. And from that position. This is a soft try. See how he just squeezed through. The dummy runner's coming on the angle. And he just squeezes in. Not a big gap. Well played there. And Myler sets him alight. And such a contrast. Twice when Leeds had the ball, they couldn't get the kick away that they wanted. Tony Smith's men got the kick away that they wanted. High towards the right-hand side of the Leeds defence and Ben Jones-Bishop. And then Myler comes up trumps. And Hodgson will surely add the extras here. And Warrington will have a six-point lead. Hoping to join the band of 12 players who've won grand finals, both sides of the world, Brett Hodgson. And he has given Warrington the perfect start. Well, the start of matches very often sets the tones, especially in big games. And Warrington have done well this season. In fact, only Wigan have scored more tries in the opening 10 minutes of matches. And for Myler to get across, again, that underlines their confidence and dominance so far in this game. They've made this look pretty easy, and Leeds have to have talked very well in that one minute they've just stood behind the post here, because they need to respond here very quickly. Well, the double dream uh, suddenly has become even more alive than it was on the journey here uh, this afternoon. It was an amazing run there by the Ben Harrison. He was going to be running on the angle as a dummy runner, used as a foil, and it actually just opened up a gap. And Myler did not miss it. Ben Westwood will get to his feet and play it to Hyam. He then goes infield and finds Hodgson. And Hodgson, who has been nursed and cajoled all the way through this season for this night. This now is Chris Hill. What a year this young man's had. What an offload as well to Hyam. And he gets it away then to Griggs. He's in sparkling form, isn't he? The loose forward, Simon Griggs. Eager to get possession. He had that little break. Great kick. Look at the backspin on that. That's awkward. It was, but the young player of the year was crowned on Monday. Zach Hardacre pouches it safely for the Rhinos. But a great chase from Warrington. Great chase in the walls in their first grand final appearance. Leeds know what they need to do, Eddie, to win these big games. We got a master class from them last week against Wigan, where they defended for the first 40 minutes. As good a defensive display as we've seen in Super League. They look a little bit vulnerable tonight in the early, in the early moments of this game in defence. They need to tighten up, they need to stop the offloads from this Warrington team, because they'll be sure those offloads will come. One thing that the Leeds Rhinos fans will remember is the fact that this team trailed in playoff games against Wakefield and the Catalan Dragons came back and won the match. And they have to do it again here on the biggest night of the year. Interesting, Eddie, is that they're utilising Kevin Sinfield way out, outside of the centre. Oh, and Jamie Jones Buchanan now with the kick. Allowed to bounce by Brett Hodgson, that will skip away. 
battle. They haven't got to the kick perfectly leads at all. Not good. That's your third one. Jamie Jones began in the second row or kicking on your third. Your first is blocked down and your second comes to nothing. You, you get caught in possession on your, on your second chance in attack. Leeds will want to fix that up before the game. Move. Kevin Sinfield and Move. a few of the other kickers were practicing, punching the ball in deep into the corner, trying to trap the Warrington wingers in there. You can imagine that was their game plan, unable to execute that so far. Well, it's mystifying as far as I'm concerned. Uh, Kevin Sinfield, his kicking game has been so influential for the Leeds Rhinos over the past few weeks, and yet he hasn't taken control of it yet. Oh, that's a big collision between Ben Harrison and Ben... Jamie Jones uh, Jamie Buchanan. Jones Buchanan. I want to make sure he's okay. Just couldn't get his head round the side. Just couldn't get it out, and you can see that the shoulder makes impact. He's such a big unit, isn't he, Ben Harrison? And he has felt the full force as the second row at Jamie Jones Buchanan. Sometimes goes unnoticed how important Jamie Jones Buchanan is to the lead side. You know, when they played at Wembley in the Challenge Cup final, Eddie, the game was pretty tight until Lee left the field with a knee injury. And when he disappeared, sometimes the defence of the lead side isn't as strong. He's almost a, an invisible bedrock that holds the, the side together, a glue that keeps them defending stronger in the middle of the field. But let's hope he's OK. Well, he's staying on the field. He certainly was dazed as he hit the ground. And uh, Ben Harrison, he just... Uh, well, he just seemed to get up there and uh, play the ball, uh, though nothing was interfering with him. Here's Breers again, another high kick, which will turn Zach Hardacre around. Will this go? No, it won't. It won't go dead. Hardacre had to run this back from his own in-goal area and does, but only as far as I am. Another great kick from Lee Breers. You can see the backspin yet again. He practices that week in, week out. Pretty strong defence as well. They're coming in on the angle, forcing Leeds into one-out rugby league football. Eight minutes of the grand final gone, the third playoff meeting between these two sides. Both previous games have seen Tony Smith ending up on the losing side. 2006, he was at Headingley when Warrington beat them. 18-17 in uh, last year's run that was hopefully going to take them to the grand final. Leeds knocked Warrington out. And Sinfield, under pressure from Ratchford, gets the ball away, but Hodgson has positioned himself perfectly and will take this ball back as far as Carl Adlett. Good crash, wasn't it? <laughs> Brett Hodgson would have felt that. And at long last, we've seen a good kick that's come from the Leeds outfit, from the skipper, Kevin Sinkfield. So important. Both coaches, Brian McDermott, Tony Smith, fully aware of the impact that the kicking game and chase game is. Third. Move! Brian McDermott it, uh, isn't the start he would have wanted, I'm sure. The pass finds its way to Myler. Oh, there's a mistake from Trent Waterhouse. And Warrington are liable to a couple of those during the course of a game. They take risks, they play high-risk rugby league. There's nothing too risky about that, it was just a, a mistake. Yeah, you could see that Waterhouse just uh, took his eyes off the ball. It looks at the, the man coming at him. It's on his slide, but it's... Uh, it can make a heck of a difference, and he knows it. Raises the arm. Sorry about the mistake. In great form, though, Trent Waterhouse, five tries in his last five appearances. Two tries for the first time in three years against the Saints last week that helped bring Warrington to Old Trafford. That's tremendous defence from Westwood, but good work from young Hardacre getting away from him, but he couldn't get away from Hill. Quick play the ball to Burrow, here comes Lulawai. Burrow again. Peacock now, taking it straight at Hill, spinning, getting the arm free, couldn't get the offload away. Harrison had moved forward to cut out the offload. Now it's Lulawai again, gets it back to Burrow, he finds Sinfield, Sinfield then to Jamie Jones Buchanan. And he goes down in the wrestle. Got to be looking now for Danny Maguire. Sinfield, this is out Maguire, finds Ablett. Good tackle by Lee Breers. Here's Ryan Hall on the last. It finds its way to Maguire, Maguire will horse the kick, looking for the big man wide, Riley does ever so well though, he was inside the field of play, was he? No, he's going to make him, he says he dropped on the ball, and he has grounded the ball in his own in-goal area. Well, the first real pressure kick that we've seen from the Rhinos, and they, they had the men, that was good work by Delaney. Do you need to explain there, Eddie, then? When he, the ball hits the ground immediately, that's deemed to be completed because it's in your in-goal area here. 
and he jumped from the field of play yep. into the end goal. So he grounds the ball in the end goal area. I know he then wrestles forward on a second bounce. There. But there, that's ended. It doesn't matter where he rolls over to. And that's the reason why Leeds will get this first goal line drop out. You know, if you think about Waterhouse's area inside the own half of the field, that could be a momentum shift in this match because the first nine minutes were clearly a dominant win for Warrington. <coughs> Yes, and here come uh, the champions defending their crown here tonight. As uh, Peacock drives it in from the goal line dropout. Now Lulawai, and this fellow will never take a backward step. His fifth grand final in six incredible seasons. Maguire tacking down that right-hand side, banned last week, missed the win at Wigan, back here for the grand final. Now, it's Sinfield again, he finds Lulawai with a short ball, good Warrington defence again, solid as a rock at the moment up the middle, Warrington. It's now with Peacock, Peacock then back to Sinfield, Sinfield loops the pass out wide, it's Ryan Hall, I think the forward pass, I think he's given forward pass, Richard Silverwood. Heard the whistle, didn't see the call, but Richard Silverwood says this went forward. Ooh, it's on his slide. Yeah, it has. This will give us a better view. You can see how they sucked in the forwards. And Sinfield knew that the winger was open. That, in my opinion, is not forward out of his hands. Doesn't matter where the ball ends up. That ball, in my opinion, hasn't gone forward out of his hands, and that's what counts. But they got a decision like that that went in their favour in France when they beat Gatland. And this one's gone against him. Yeah. I'm saying those are the 50-50 calls. It hasn't gone for them on the first uh, big attack tonight. And they do say, don't they, during the course of the year and in the big games, that things do even themselves up. And there won't be many opportunities, Eddie, because Tony Smith will have got the message out straight away. We've got to ensure that we don't get sucked in. That sliding defence was caught out wide. And I'm with, uh, with Brian. I did not think that that was a forward pass from the long shot. That's four. Move! Back right. Go, four. Pass. Go. Pass one. Pass one. Move! On the line here. Go, one. Two. Move! Back! Stefan! Stefan! Go! Two! Third! Move! Have Leeds well, steadied the ship here? Do you yeah. think they've, they've settled it down a bit? Yep. Well, they absolutely have, Eddie. They're breaking up the Warrington in defence now on occasions. Even though Ryan Hall's try was chalked off, that will have given them confidence that Kevin Sinfield started getting his kicking game working. This is much better from the Leeds Rhinos. It's so going to be a good kick here, though. They've got to get some height on it. I was going to say, let's see how this ends up. And it is high from Sinfield. It's gone out wide looking for Ben Jones Bishop out there. He claims it. He drops it. It's hacked forward by Callum Watkins. But the referee says it's the turnover because it was a knock on in his view. Good option. Maybe. Jones Bishop might have been better to try to palm that ball down rather than take it. In the last minutes play, we saw Lee's playing the ball quickly, Ed, and if you think about Rob Burrow's greatest strength, it's running at big men, perhaps when they're going backwards, retreating to get onside, and he was certainly given several opportunities to do that. If Leeds continue to dominate and provide that fast play of the ball, he becomes even more dangerous. Warrington with just their noses in front and in possession here with Ben Westwood. They won three titles in a golden spell, 1948 to 1955. All three were won in Manchester, but across the city at Main Road. Here they are at the home of Manchester United trying to repeat history 57 years on. And the last time they won the double was 1954. Great kick again from Breers. Hangs and then Hall picks it up and tries to respond with a bit of interest. And you could see that the Warrington players in one line, they are very disciplined in that defence. And I must say that uh, it, it, it's the errors, we've seen two already, in regards to out of position there by uh, Joel Monaghan, the winger, that it was scrubbed off though, the try for Hall. 
Remember the mistake that allowed Myler to go in for the first try of the game. That rail cam, Eddie, gives you a great idea of what the players have to do in, de in defence. Makes rugby league such a difficult sport. You've got to make the tackle, then you've got to retreat back ten to the referee and get yourself ready and get back up again. It is physically incredibly demanding. It was physically incredibly demanding then. Mickey Hyam Mickey Hyam got to Ryan Bailey and was absolutely Ooh. clattered, and he's only just recovering. Wait, wait, wait. Go, Such is the physical demand of this sport. As Brian rightly said, you've got to get up and get back so Two. quickly. Move. Almost like a 100-metre sprinter wait, wait if you go. possibly can, but go. then you have to be up to the Two. physical battle that comes at you. I'm not so sure that Mickey Hyam is 100%. Wait. He still looks Move. very groggy, though. They've raised the arm, saying, yeah, he's OK. Yeah, thumbs Let's up go. to the bench, Move. so Hyam will continue. We won't be waiting Move. long, though, I think, before we see the introduction of Michael Monaghan. It is the way that uh, Tony Smith has played it this year. And Adrian Morley is also warming up on the uh, sideline right now. Here goes Breers and fires the pass wide to Monaghan. Monaghan will hack it in field. And Hyam is after this. It could be a fatal bounce to the rescue of the captain, Kevin Sinfield. Unbelievable kick again. I wonder whether Hyam is feeling a little groggy. But here, I'll tell you something, Sinfield is. Oh, you can't afford to let it bounce there. Hardacre, very fortunate that his captain came to the rescue. He got crunched. You could see there that uh, they'd overrun it. Was Hyam onside? I think he, he had to be behind the kicker, didn't he, to get near it? I think he was in front of the kicker, as far as I'm concerned. Lucky to get away with that. And then Kevin Sinfield is a meat in a Warrington sandwich. Yeah, I think the... the Westwood's knee, left knee, goes uh, right into the rib cage. Well, if there's one uh, member of this Leeds team that they don't want to lose, it's Kevin Sinfield. Well, you could, see, you could see him grimace, couldn't you? Absolutely, you single it out straight away, that's a captain's knock. Putting that effort into dive on that ball, Eddie, that makes such a difference. You see the determination written on his face. He's willing to risk injury for it, and that's why he's the captain of that great club. Brian McDermott calls this group of players a remarkable group of young men. Well, last year they won it from fifth, Eddie, and everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people thought that maybe that was just a fluke. They proved it wrong. They're back here again. They're only six points down. And Sinfield and Leeds seem to be getting the kicking game in order. But here comes Joel Monaghan for the Warrington Wolves. First. Try against St. Helens last week for Monaghan. There is Sinfield just breathing deeply, getting lungs filled with air again. Two. That's the second tackle, this set of six for Warrington, still inside their own half. And Riley trying to burst his way through, 29 tries in all this year. Here comes Morley, turning the clock back. 1998, the very first grand final Morley played in the colours of the Leeds Rhinos. Here he is in 2012 in the 15th grand final. A great run by Westwood. Lee Breers utilising him out on this right-hand side, just outside of the centre position. Breers, he's been kicking magnificently, it's another high one over on that far side, looking for Riley, finds Riley, who bounces forward. No advantage, he'll put the scrum down. Uh, yes, it'll be the turnover, it was on the last. Sorry, <laughs> on the last there, but uh, again, Prime McDermott, it'll be fully aware they're pinpointing Jones Bishop, that is for sure. <coughs> Callum Watkins now in the England squad. First grand final. There are only three rhinos out there who've never experienced this big night before. Tony Smith has, of course, he's aiming to become the first man to lead two different clubs to Old Trafford triumphs in a grand final. And the last two times he did it was with the Leeds rhinos. Here is Jamie Jones Buchanan now getting them over the halfway line. Needs a quicker play of the ball, he's trying to do that. That's good work. That allows Burrow to really scoot away. He wants to do exactly the same. You can see Chris Hill all over the top of him. And Sinfield hoists it high. Hall is after it. And it's been, I think, dropped into the arms of Adler. Here comes Sinfield. Try for Kevin Sinfield. The referee will have a look, though. He'll hand this upstairs to Phil Bentham. Just wants to check if there's a knock-on in the build-up to this try from Sinfield. No Good. problem with the onside. Yep. Good work by uh, Ablett and Hall. 
to ensure that they were behind the skipper. Paul's going for the football, it comes off Monaghan, straight in the arms of Ablett. And how about this for being aware? The good call by the captain, Kevin Sinfield, leans over. This should be given. The Rhinos hit back. It looks pretty good, eh? I think the question is whether or not it's hit, there's been not. Uh, that's all OK so far. It's when it comes down, it looks like it might hit the back of Ryan Hall's head. And then it, does it go forward to Carl Ablett or is Ablett behind him? Can't quite tell from this position, can you? I think you, it's it? come off Monaghan, hasn't it? Yeah. I think it's off Monaghan, I think this will stand. They've already had one chalked off. Brian Hall into the corner, but I that's think play on. that's play on, yeah, by... And Steve-O, you've got to chase your kick. You chase your kick and you get the rewards. Who put the kick up, who scores the try? Kevin Sidfield. Well, we've given him the try, Phil Bentham hasn't yet. But they're having a look at the grounding, so it looks like this is going to be given. A last look at the grounding, no problems. And Kevin Sinfield has scored the first try for the Leeds Rhinos. His seventh grand final, his tenth year as captain. Leeds' longest serving skipper. 51 points in grand finals now over the years. And how vital might that four be? Well, he's noted mainly for adding the extras and kicking the penalties, but to come up with a try like this is sensational. Talk about the second effort. Look at him, he's lurking. He's lurking to see what's going to go on. How about that for reading the game? Great finish. Yes, great finish from Sinfield, and can he level the scores with the boot? Sinfield is the top goal kicker, the top point scorer in Super League this year. From tight to the touchline, Sinfield has brought the boots with him. It sets a pace in the grand final. Well, it certainly helps your chances of winning if you're the dominant team in the middle of the field. And I think in the last 10 minutes, Brian McDermott and his players have been dominant. When they've carried the ball, they've made good ground and they've played the ball very quickly. And it's allowed Kevin Sinfield to put up in his favourite kick there for Ryan Hall. A great catch of the ball, he contests for it. And the game awareness of Carl Ablett is outstanding to know that his captain would be just behind him. And I want to mention this now and not the next time that Sinfield takes a kick. 17 successful kicks from 17 in this playoff series so far. He's been the start of the show in the playoffs. As far as I'm concerned, he's, uh, he's certainly turned it on there, didn't he? Back on. Substitution worth mentioning for White and Wolves. Paul Wood has come on in the middle of the field. He had a big impact in the game, the win against St. Helens. It was his offload that led to Simon Griggs' try just before half-time that got Warrington back into that game. Great footwork and a great offload. With him and Morley in the middle, they will challenge that Leeds dominance that Phil has spoken about. Early lead to the Warrington Wolves, cancelled out just by Sinfield, six points. Warrington six, Leeds six in the 21st minute of the 2012 Super League Grand Final. Big problem now for Leeds, can they get anywhere near that halfway line? Utilise that long kick downfield. Oh, that's good work. Great work from Breers. You know, many people over the many years have said that the one negative about Breers is that about his defence. Well, he's showing now he can take them all on. Last tackle, though, here for Leeds. They haven't made much progress this set of six. They might do now off the boot of Sinfield. It skims across the turf and it finds Brett Hodgson. It's about the best recovery you can have, isn't it? I mean, you can see the try, Warrington clearly scored behind the post, but the next six tackles they had to make had to be good ones. And so they didn't want the momentum to roll behind Leeds, and they've temporarily stemmed it. Good hit there by Ian Kirk. Brian McDermott obviously wants to just uh, get some more muscle out there. Hold him, young third. Well, there were a lot of people thinking that Warrington would just roll all over Leeds Rhinos here at Old Trafford tonight. But uh, these two sides have given us 22 minutes to remember so far. And this is Mickey Hyam. But he couldn't tackle here for Warrington. You couldn't blame them any the way that uh, Richie Myler just ghosted through to score that first try. Neat little chip over. Oh, it's awkward for the fullback. It is, it went backwards. He was lucky to get away with that. Myler was following his own chip through. And 
and uh, Zach Hardacre limps away from that play, the ball. They're going through the walls of Leeds. Oh. Now here comes Monaghan. Wait, wait. Well, we'll see a little bit different play as we've uh, Mickey Hyam. I think that's a smart move as well because Hyam picked up a, a knock. Good. Really didn't know where he was for uh, for several minutes. You see a lot more running from uh, Michael Monaghan. Hamlet again. Good defence though from Warrington here. Look where Leeds have to kick this ball from inside their own 40, and Sinfield gives it some umph right over the head of Joel Monaghan, and it runs dead in goal. Not a terrible result. Not a terrible result for them. They're not going to score and it goes dead, but it gives them a chance to just compose themselves and get set and try and pin Warrington into their own half. And that's what they're trying to do here. That's the first tackle from the 20-metre restart. And Ratchford gets the ball away to Riley. Riley tries to go inside Callum Watkins. But I must say, the discipline from both sides has been excellent so far. They really are well drilled, two good coaches, that's a knock-on. Knock-on both ways, I think the first one was by Warrington. Yep. They're He's taking it to the limit, they're taking this, they're taking chances, which is in their DNA. Certainly is, but uh, with so many people around, this really is a bit of a... There's a knock-on there from Michael Monaghan. You're right, Eddie, they, they like to keep it alive, but sometimes just get field position. It's so important, especially the way that Lee Braves has been kicking so far. Well, you might have noticed the crystal clarity of those pictures that we brought you then. It's a, a new development in the, the technological world of television that we up here know very little about. But when you think back to the uh, Michael Withers knock-on years ago for the Bradford Bulls... That's a penalty, utilising the knee. Well, I've just given them a little bit of a, a pat on the back about the, uh, the discipline. First penalty of the game, this. I'm just going to make the point about that uh, picture that we saw of the, the clear knock-on by Monaghan. If we'd have had that technology with us when uh, we had that Michael Withers knock-on against St Helens, which was given as a knock-on, there would have been no arguments. But years and years on, the arguments rage about that. Well, you it should, was 1999. You certainly keep stoking up the fire, don't you? <laughs> that is for sure. And not, to, not a surprising move, this. Anybody think this was a little bit harsh, maybe, on Ben Harrison? He was penalised for the use of the knee, yeah. interfering with the play of the ball. I mean, I think he's just regaining his feet, as is the, as is the Leeds player, I think. That is a harsh penalty for the Warrington very, Wolves to be... Very harsh. We have a given against them. But what about Sinfield? Well, he might tackle to kick at goal, though. We, we, it paid off for them last week at Wigan. It didn't pay off for them, perhaps, in the Tallis Cup final. When twice Sinfield kicked the goal in the first half, and maybe they needed, with great field position, a couple more tries. Well, Sinfield... has made it 18 out of 18. And Leeds have the advantage. You're right, it came back to haunt them, really, at Wembley. It didn't come back to haunt them last week at Wigan. It was just a little sly nudge. It just knocked the ball out of the arms, and maybe that's what decided Richard Silverwood that the penalty had to be given. And it was very it close. Was, it was tough, though. Yeah, it was a tough it was, call. It was close to Callum Watkins, nearly losing control of that as well. But those minor things to just turn the game around... Ooh, and that looked a little bit uh, high there by, uh, by Adrian Morley. Burrow flicks the pass and gives it to Peacock. Interesting, Eddie, is that uh, in all the grand finals we've not had a sin bin and we've never had a sending off. <laughs> I'm not don't saying be, we won't want. Don't be tempting fate. No. One of the interesting things about this game, Eddie, is that Leeds have had far more possession than Warrington at the moment. For the Rhinos to win, they have to. That has to continue because I think if Leeds are given more possession, sorry, if Warrington, they've got points in them. But again, another penalty. Six more chances here now for what for the uh, Leeds team to attack if they find touch for this kick. Yeah, uh, Manchester United fan Mike Cooper just straying into the face of Brett Delaney. You get an idea of the difficulty of coming off the bench 20 minutes into the game or 25 minutes in when everybody else is up to pace. Michael Bonham came off the bench and he, he dropped the ball off a of Ryan Atkins offload. Mike Cooper just off the bench, had a great performance last week against St. Helens and he's given away a penalty, put his side under pressure. They're trying to get up to game speed, it's not easy. Burrow and Sinfield are up to game speed, so is Maguire and here is Ablett. And after a shaky start, Leeds have found their old Trafford feet again. 
it's Jamie Jones Buchanan. And they can thank the, the skipper Kevin Sinfield. Remember, the first two kicks, they avoided the captain, and they weren't two good ones either. Ian Kirk will take it forward. That's four. Now will Move. they put the pressure on Joel Monaghan Wait. again? Wait, go four. This is uh, tackle number five coming up, and they're going down the right-hand side with Maguire, who finds Ben Jones Bishop, and he barges through the defence. Emotionless, the coach, Brian McDermott, but there's plenty of emotion out there in blue and amber, and Ben Jones Bishop, he crashed Ben Under pressure with the high kicks. He looked a little bit nervous, but he wasn't nervous on this occasion. I expected the kick over in this right hand side. This is the penalty given away by Cooper. He finished up into the face of Delaney. But watch this as he comes on the angle. Maguire picks him out. Riley should have got him. Riley went far too high. You can't afford to do that. It's a planned move. Watch Maguire. Bang, straight in. Should have gone for the legs. Tried for the big bustle. Didn't work. Hodgson tried the same. Ben Jones Bishop has sent the Leeds fans delirious. I think that has to be one of the hardest difficulties in this sport, skills in this sport, because he's actually changed direction whilst catching a ball at the same time. And you know what I mean? Most of us have to concentrate on one thing at a time. He's combined the two to massive effect. And this is a massive kick. A massive kick for Sinfield. And a kicker extraordinaire in the rugby league of the extraordinary. 14-6 to Leeds. Well, they talk about the Holy Trinity Leeds, don't they? Kevin Sinfield kicking that goal. Rob Burrows the other one. And Danny Maguire. Have a look at the pass from Maguire to hit Ben Jones Bishop. A wonderful on-the-money pass. And if you get down low and you get down pitch side beside Ben Jones Bishop, he is a big man. Chris Riley got rolled over on that occasion, as did the fullback Brett Hodgson. Two very, very powerful athletes on the right hand side for Leeds, Ben Jones Bishop and Callum Watkins. On that occasion, their abilities pay dividends. Well, they paid the price, didn't they, Warrington? A high shot from Cooper. We mentioned the fact that the discipline was good as soon as I'd said it. They lose it, it looks like Kate Westwood's down. Boy, this has been one tough opener. It has 14 points to Leeds in the last 10 minutes. And an injury here. Big clash of heads. Oh, clash of the elbow with Ian Kirk's elbow straight to the face of Ben Westwood. Totally accidental. Boy, that hurts. Well, you know, if you ask anybody around LS6, which is the uh, postcode of the Headingley Stadium, they will tell you that Old Trafford is a little piece of Yorkshire. Because Leeds, they love coming in, and here goes Maguire. That's an important tackle by Atkins. A lot of the Warrington players were looking, they thought the referee was said there was obstruction. There was certainly an angle dummy runner. He hesitated slightly, did Silver won the official. But Maguire, four or five years ago, he would have been underneath the sticks. Doesn't have that same explosive speed, but he certainly has the guy. If he could have got the ball out to Ben Jones Bishop, he might have been underneath the sticks as well. This is the last tackle here for Leeds, and they're running this one with Adlett and Hall. And Hall dumps the ball down and over the top to Sinfield. It's opened up for Sinfield. Quick hands, ball's lost. Myler has it back. Warrington survive. Boy, you can afford to do that when you're leading 14 points to six. The confidence running through the veins of these rhinos. Maguire got sandwiched. They need to just settle down now, Warrington. Hard work in the forward, get good position, get back to that kick and chase game. That's a huge run from Trent Waterhouse. Don't underestimate the difference that makes. New wait and see where Lee Breers kicks from at the end of this set. If it is Breers that kicks, thanks to a run like that from Waterhouse. Cooper keeps the legs pumping as well. They're just over the halfway line here as we reach the last. And it's with Breers, and there's the kick high. And it's between Hall and Hardacre, and Hardacre takes it cleanly. Steps away from one, steps away from two. Important tackle it was by Michael Monaghan. Boy, cool, take the, the high kick, then the step. Good work.
work again. Jenny is one to more. Yeah. Hardacre goes down, tackle number three. Peacock will try and drive the Leeds Rhinos over halfway and does. He sucks the defenders in, doesn't he? Trouble is, can't get away with the quick play of the ball. Delaney. That's the last tackle here coming up for the Leeds Rhinos. And under pressure from Myler, Maguire gets the kick away. Westwood feels it, but then feels the weight of the onrushing uh, Jamie Jones, Buchanan and Carl Ablett. And here goes Michael Monaghan, he tries to knock Callum Watkins out of his way. Heavyweight reinforcements come in and put him down. 32 minutes of a rip-roaring grand final. Yeah, good work there. Adrian Morley knows that uh, field position is going to be vital now. Good run from Wood. Holds it on halfway. They're in the opposition half and that's important. Can they make the kick work? Myler, short ball, Waterhouse. Sinfield's all over the place. Atkins, last tackle here. Myler with the kicking this time. High and deep. Easy this should be for Hardacre. Young player of the year, here he comes. Met by Breers at the other end of the age scale, Lee Breers. Myler with the kick, just a touch too strong. No chance of any pressure applied on it. That's good work from the winger. Talking of the other end of the age scale, Adrian Morley tonight becomes the oldest man ever to appear in a grand final. And there he is in the tackle. Big Adrian was here in 98 with Leeds in the inaugural grand final. 15 years on, he's back again. Burrow with one of those typical scampering runs. And you get the feeling that Burrow is getting his feet. He wants to put more pressure on. Good offload. Delaney finds Maguire, who in turn finds Jamie Jones Buchanan finds Maguire, great hands, Ablett. Oh, and Ryan Hall couldn't take it in. He had an open field as well. Stephen Ratchford had gone in. Taking a risk to the nth degree, both sides. Great stuff, though, isn't it? Great to watch. Well, I've always had most of the ball leads. I'm sure they're aware that last week at a similar time, the score was very similar uh, on the scoreboard for uh, Warrington, but they managed to get that vital try before half-time, and I think that changed the tone of the game that put them here tonight. Whiten have been outplayed clearly in the last 33, 34 minutes of this match, but they have a strike capability in the last five now to change what we would think could be the half-time scoreboard. And that left side of the field with Ryan Atkins and Chris Riley is where they very often get themselves out of trouble. Yes, it's a massive six minutes coming up, and here's Morley. Gets them to halfway on tackle number two. Michael Monaghan. Atkins. Stopped by Watkins. Finished off by Ian Kirk. Michael Monaghan clapping his hands, wants to get on with it. Cooper, Myler. Warrington looking for something, sensing that this could be an important moment in the match. Michael Monaghan, Lee Breers back on the inside. Mike Cooper is clattered immediately by Sean Lund. Great, nice tackle. Great decision by Sean Lund. Just come off the bench. Two really good tackles. Breers. Great kick from Breers. Good take from Ryan Hall under pressure from Monaghan. Did he lose that? Did he lose that, Ryan Hall? That came very close to being uh, lost. He does. That, that has not been picked up by the officials. Third. Move. Ryan White. It's going Leeds way at the moment. Delaney. That's been outstanding in these playoffs, Brett Delaney. Important for Leeds now, Eddie, not to concede to Warrington in his last five minutes. Try la That's a vital error. You know, the Greeks try last week, got them back into the game. Could the same happen now? We've got five minutes. It's Carl Abbott's yeah, drop the ball, give Warrington a chance in a great attacking position. Again, well, Leeds Rhinos taking the big risk, the big risk play by Kevin Sinfield. Comes off, it's brilliant. Happens like that, and it could turn the course of history. Certainly the opportunity there, Carl Ablett. Wasn't a really bad pass. So here comes Warrington, and it's their chance. It is now as well, because Leeds caught offside. They've got to tap it. Don't bother for going for the two. They've got to make sure that they score before half time. Well, four minutes to go. It's offside from the scrum, so yeah. it's a differential penalty anyway. 
they couldn't go for the two points, they have to run it, and they are with Waterhouse, and he stands and goes down eventually. This is Michael Monaghan, flicks the ball inside and finds Myler, he finds Breers, there's something on here for Warrington, it's with Ratchford. Lead slide across and cut the options down. Again, discipline the key in that defence. Mike Cooper will take it forward. Watch for the blind side move. Michael Monaghan waits. Goes in centre field and finds Breers. Breers will run across the line laterally, then the ball is lost backwards. That's back to six. Six to go. And Hodgson takes it in. Boy, he gets clattered as well. Sinfield did not miss him. Michael Monaghan. Here comes Morley. Desperate defence, desperate attack, three minutes to half-time, Warrington with Breers, Breers out wide, it comes to Joel Monaghan, and Joel Monaghan is in! Two big moments for Leeds that went wrong, one big moment for Warrington that's gone right. And Joel Monaghan, he scored a try against St Helens last week, he has a strike rate that is as good as any, that's his 59th try in his 57th match for Warrington over the past two years. And he's given the Wolves hope as we approach half-time. Certainly has, and there's the back to six. Knocked down by Danny Maguire. Get him the opportunity, but this is beautiful play. Breers holds it, and you can see that Ryan Hall has come out of the line. He's got in on the angle. It should have been man-on-man -man marking. It wasn't. It was an easy try in the end. But the pass from Lee Breers is superb. Hesitates, and you fail. Not that Joel Monaghan would be worrying about that. And maybe Leeds have paid the price for being too adventurous deep within their own half. Remember, they wanted to keep the ball alive. Ablett came up with the error. And the Wolves are back in this game. And what a psychological blow this could be. Well, you talk about Sinfield being a great kicker for Leeds in the years, and this fellow is for the Warrington Wolves as well. Lance Todd winner against Leeds in August. Two points that might just push Warrington towards the double in October 2012, and it's 14-12 to the Rhinos. It's lovely to watch at times, isn't it? But I'm referring to the fact that Leeds kept it alive deep in their own half and in their own territory. The result is happiness for the Warrington fans. Finish it off well, but the pass from Breers, outstanding. And the kickoff is deep, and Warrington have to run it back from their own line again, and Morley does that. And he's met by Ablett and Jamie Jones Buchanan, and I think Ablett came off the worst. And here's another penalty to Warrington, momentum changer. Yeah, well, I wanted to get on with it. <laughs> and you can see there that Morley tried. This and is a desperate 60 seconds coming up great. in the grand final of 2012. Just saying, Eddie, great play by Stephen Ratchford. He knew that they were offside. Get the penalty. Well, that's and and Warrington said could, could actually strike again here. There's plenty of time. And that's more uh, Monaghan, who wants to get to his feet and play it, which he does to Myler. He then finds Breers. Breers then, away it goes to Hodgson, and he is involved by two. Will they wait till the last to get the kick away? Interesting. Ratchford to Wood, Wood to Myler. He steps inside. Here goes Michael Cooper. Michael Cooper is grounded by the desperate tackle of Delaney. Here is Wood, Wood then to Breers, Breers dabs the kick in, and Ryan Hall will run it dead. And Leeds will be in no rush to take the goal line drop out, but Tony Smith knows his team are well and truly in this. Hang on, it's offside against Leeds. Marcus not standing square, they're going to go for two. They'll go for two here, and level it up at half-time. That is little doubt about it, and uh, you can see there Brett Hodgson going over. Says, give it to me. Well, this could square it up. It's been a nervous three or four minutes. Look at the tension, the hit. Oh, dearie me. That gives you some indication of what it's like to play at this level. Frightening. Frightening. 
Well, they all close their eyes. Whatever anybody says, when, he, when you get to that point where he runs at you, he closes his eyes, the two defenders close their eyes, because you know there's pain coming. And I've read about Adrian Moore in the past. He said, I know it's going to hurt, so I think if I run harder than he's going to hit me, it's going to hurt him more than me, and uh, that's his approach to it. But, boy, the kick, the return from the kickoff set the tone, didn't it? They weren't satisfied with just the six points they've got. They wanted more, and with Hodgson's attempt here, they might just level it as a break. Yeah, they might indeed. This to square things up and make it 14 points apiece. The half-time siren has already gone. This will be the last kick of the first half. And Hodgson is as good as anybody, as I just said, less than a minute ago. And the grand final is all square at Old Trafford. A scintillating first half, magnificent. Only the third time in 15 grand finals where we've seen more than 20 points in a first half. And they are absolutely level, side by side, as they make their way to the dressing rooms for the half-time breather. Leeds have won 27, drawn one of 40 Super League encounters with Warrington since 1996. The very first weekend of 1996 in Super League saw Leeds entertain Warrington at Headingley. The Wolves won that day 22-18. It's 14 all as we get the second half underway of the grand final 2012. Sinfield's kick. And here comes Adrian Morley. That's one. Some of the defence and the tackles in that first half was brutal. There were players walking around dazed. It's uh, it's been a rough, tough encounter. But who's going to produce the skills in the second half? Well, the next 20 minutes for Warrington are vital. They don't want to get to the hour mark with this still being a close game. Remember back 12 months, Leeds were trailing St. Helens at 60 minutes and scored four tries in that last quarter of the game. They are the best team in the final quarter this season. And Warrington, I guess, will want some comfort in the next 20 minutes. They'll have to play well and perhaps rack up some points in this next quarter. Here's the last tackle of the second half, and the kick is easy for Hardacre, who positioned himself well. He has uh, learnt his trade very well as a full-back. I think that's where we're going to see him in the future from Brent Webb during his time at Heading Elite. Let's go down to uh, Rod Studd. Half-time news, Rod. Yes, and then the most important team talk of the season for both coaches, Eddie Watt, Brian McDermott and Tony Smith enjoying the game, both of them really. Tony Smith saying that's exactly what he's expected, a really tough game, a real proper grand final, and hoping his team can stay in the arm wrestle and up their game like they did in the second half last week against St. Helens Eddie and get the same result. Leeds and Brian McDermott, well, uh, McDermott talking about making sure they get their kicking game right and being very, very wary about stopping Warrington offloading, just a bit concerned about that. Thanks, Rod. Here comes Callum Watkins, meanwhile. That's the uh, fifth. So expect the kick here from okay. Kevin Sinfield, it's high. He got clattered by uh, Michael Monaghan, and Sinfield has stayed down. And well, no it. action from the text judge or the referee. Oh, that's a, a head clash. Oh, that was late. Well, we are slowing it down here, Steve. I thought yeah, we all lost that. it. We all thought it looked a fair challenge. He was at his arms in a position. They've collided heads, haven't they, at the very end? Yeah. His hands are up to prevent the ball going up. No wonder he's looking concerned. And he's equal risk to both players there with, with Michael Monaghan going in there. I don't think there's anything foul or malicious on this. You just you hope that Kevin Sinfield is OK, first and foremost. If you're a Leeds Rhinos fan, you'll be praying that he's OK. But if they're going to win this game, he will be crucial. Well, quite frankly, uh, I disagree. I, I, I think that he had every chance to pull out of that after the kick had gone away. It's, I, I know the lads are saying, Steve, it's difficult to make a judgment no, in it. slow motion. It'd be nice to see it in, uh, in normal time. Don't forget, Match when you're running, you can't stop immediately when you're running, even if he starts to slow down to decelerate. You can't stop. Well, well, here it comes now, here it comes now. This is, this is match speed, normal. Right, that's gone. I think it's continued on. But that's only my opinion. By the way, let's hope that uh, both of them are OK. Well, Michael Monaghan's OK, and uh, Kevin Sinfield's having a swig of water, so hopefully he's OK. 
I don't think he can back out of that, Steve-O. OK. It's all opinion, we're all allowed one. Don't, don't panic, it's a grand final. Hey, I'm not panicking. <laughs> People around me are afraid to be doing that. <laughs> Either way, two. it's good to see that they're, they're going to be OK. Go two. Yes, it's uh, it's good news for Leeds that uh, Sinfield's fit and he's there. And that's been spilled by Warrington. Good. They've got it back. I don't know how they've got it back. Well, Brett Delaney missed it, Eddie. He tried to dive on it. The, the offload was back. Was here goes Myler. Myler down the left-hand side. Puts the kick in. And it runs dead in goal. He has got the most timely shot from the Leeds Rhinos player. He was looking to kick back infield, smart play from the halfback, no support to pass the ball to, so try to kick it back inside, had a look, and then pushed just as he kicked, meant that the ball didn't go where he wanted to do. Well, uh, two and a half minutes of the second half, plenty to talk about, as you would expect on a night like this. Yeah, and it shows quite clearly that Richie Myler has got the pace got that speed to be able to put them under a lot of pressure. We, we have not seen that same sort of uh, pace from Danny Maguire, who's uh, virtually just been an offloader, and at many times drops into the dummy half position. Let's go down to Rod uh, for news on Kevin Sinfield. He's still out there, Rod, isn't he? Yes, he is, Eddie, and the Leeds medical staff continuing to monitor him at the end of every set of six. They're very concerned about the captain. Clearly, they don't want to bring him off. They need to keep him on. He's their talismanic figure. They would be very reticent to bring him off. I watched Brian McDermott watching the replays of the incident on the big screen, an old poker face. He didn't give much away, Brian McDermott. Exactly what he thought of that late hit by uh, Michael Monaghan. Sinfield's still out there, but looks in the spot of bother, Eddie. Involved in the tackle Four. there, Move. as uh, Paul Wood took it forward for the Wolves, helped out by Delaney in the tackle. Here's Westwood, who leading with the uh, the arm yeah. was up in the air then. Certainly was, the elbow certainly got, got up there. Move. I think that Brian McDermott would have been uh, very pleased indeed that uh, Kevin Sinfield was involved in the, the tackle previous. Looks as though he's just shaken that injury off. It was a massive clash of heads. Breeze's kick skims across the turf and is trapped by Zach Hardacre in front of the Stratford end. Oh, he's lost it! The ball has come free, and Warrington have it back, and this is red for danger for the Rhinos. Well, it looked as though the ball back had it all under control, and oh. now they've lost it. But that went backwards, says the referee. Play on. Oh, this is getting changed. It. I'm sure it's Milan who actually stripped it. What a quick play of play from him. It's Milan now. And the tackle is completed by Delaney, helped out also by Ben Jones Bishop. Hodgson gives it to Atkins! Atkins scores! Beautiful blindside move! They caught them on the hop. Leeds were not aware of that. They thought it was going to shift over to the right. But the quick blindside, they've utilised that several times this season of the Wolves. And boy, are they happy. They have every right to be. They just fell asleep in Leeds for the final moment. You can't afford to do that, not in the grand final. Ryan Atkins is 27 tomorrow, he's in the England squad, he's off to South Africa next week. And this poor old Zach Hardacre. You can see Myla goes right into the face. Crowd has seen it, the Leeds fans don't like it. There's Ratford having the, the ball knocked down, it went, did go backwards. But wasn't that great from the full-back? They should have been aware and they weren't. Great thinking by Brent Hodgson, and what a finish. Well, Ben Jones Bishop in the first half barged his way over the line, and Ryan Atkins has just repeated the dose for the Warrington Wolves. 24 tries now for the season. One against Leeds at Wembley, one in the grand final. And Hodgson now to try and add two more points to the Warrington total. Well, he played for New South Wales at state of origin level, this fellow. He captained the Exiles this summer. And can he now kick two more points for the Wolves? Just the wrong side, just didn't have the legs. 18-14.
First blood, second half, the Wolves. And it just shows you, you've got experience out there. See how they threw the dummy. They're held back. They could not believe it. Look at the expression on Zach Hardacre's face. He came up with the error. And now the pressure is well and truly on the Rhinos. Can they fight back? Can they get possession? Defenders win matches, and Callum Watkins will want to do an awful lot better if Ryan Atkins comes down his side again. He's well capable of matching Atkins physically, but on that occasion, he'll admit it was a poor effort on his behalf. Here's a penalty for Warrington. They were wrestling Ben Westwood on the ground. They're saying that he uh, lost it. Maybe it's been deemed to be a two-man strip. And it underlines the point that Brian Carney made earlier, that when you're sat on the such benches, Griffin and Ward have been done for over an hour here, waiting to get in the action. You're just that keen to do something and change the game when you get on, that maybe you've just worked too hard. There was no doubt about that. It was a strip. And this is a very important time now for this Leeds outfit. Hasn't Morley's appearance, and this fellow's appearance energised them. Oh, it's a knock-on. The referee had the whistle to the mouth, now he will put the scrum down. And it's head and feet to lead. Yeah, he's got that right. But Monaghan, what we expected, through the dummy, just a touch too high there for Stefan Ratsford. But Tony Smith knows that that could be very costly indeed. Eight minutes of the second half gone. Leads with... Captain Kevin Sinfield nursing a bang on the jaw, but still out there, and Stevie Ward halted immediately by Monaghan. Lunt gets it away to Sinfield, short ball then from him to Griffin. Was that high? The Leeds fans thought so. The referee thought otherwise. Lunt goes down the short side with Maguire, gets it away to Jamie Jones Buchanan. Good build-up. Very good build-up by Leeds. Here's Peacock. Stands and gets away from one. Keeps going, Peacock. This in is reverse. Really need, he needs a quick play the ball here, but they're preventing that. And he finds his way to Ryan Hall, who then had the back door, gives it straight to Ratchford. And that's a gift. Yeah, a little bit of panic coming into the Leeds play now. Just getting a touch frustrated. Not surprised with the way that uh, Warrington's defence has been so solid. Oh, that's a looping pass, that's a strange one, but it's come off. And Atkins, again, this time three are there to bring him down. Myler gives it to Atkins again. Stands on one knee and gives it back to Myler. Myla then gives it to Riley. Good job that Maguire was there. This is the last one for Warrington. Monaghan, Myla, Briers. Bump up, it goes in the air again. Touch Tested too for long. Ryan Hall. Touch too long there, but look at that defence again. Though Hall did well to get to, into a good position. Can they get into the opposition half. It's so vital then, and then we can see the run from Barrow, that's good. Run trying to get himself away from trouble. Michael Cooper wouldn't let him. Sinfield finds Ward. Stevie Ward, one of the youngest ever to grace this night. We'll, see now. we'll see now if Sinfield's OK. This is Peacock again. He's got himself in a good position on this blind side. It'll come to him. Simply gets the kick away. Ricochet. Great ball from Watkins. Ben Jones Bishop. Back to zero in the tackle camp. What a pass that was. Did well to hang on to it, Ben Jones Bishop. Here's Watkins who got the pass away. Gives it to Simfield. Now Darrell Griffin. Griffin, the big man standing, but eventually going down because of sheer weight of numbers against him. Ten metres out the Leeds Rhinos. Lund will come the short side. And he gets the penalty because they're offside on their own line, Warrington. Good work by Lunt. He's squeezed a few penalties out ever since he's uh, gone to, to this Leeds outfit. And they're running this one with Griffin. Griffin to within a metre of the line again. 
Barrow, will they use him as a dummy runner? That's Lunt going for Broke himself. The, lead, the Warrington defence stands firm. Stevie Ward fires the pass to Burrow. And Burrow then gives it to Maguire. Maguire with a kick over the top. It's not long enough. It's brilliantly caught in the air by Joel Monaghan. Tremendous play by Monaghan there. He anticipated that. Was not going to get caught out like he did a couple of times in the first half. Anticipated, put himself in a fantastic position. Rod spoke at halftime about the coaches wanted their teams to stay in the arm wrestle, and that's what we have now. We have the arm wrestle. Who is going to concede first? Who's going to crack? These Rhinos have worked their way back into this game after conceding the first point of the second half. They're firmly in it. Discipline now is going to be key. Do not give the referee the opportunity to blow a penalty. Mike Cooper doesn't make too much ground. In fact, Warrington haven't made too much on this set. 20 metres, that's all. They might make a few more now with Breers. That's a lovely chip over the top, looking for Monaghan. And he's flicked it forward, this will be brought Knock back. On, yeah. It was inventive from Breers. It certainly was. And nearly caught them out as well. So close to being one of the tries of the season. Yeah, he's got a wonderful football brain, this fella. You don't get points for entertainment, but certainly win supporters and Warrington. No wonder where they are, where they've brought here. That they're going to try and entertain them whenever possible. It is a philosophy of Tony Smith and his side. They'll take chances. Sometimes it comes off. And if it doesn't, then, well, you have to defend. But when it does come off, it's spectacular, and that would have been. All the way, boys. Go. Ward to his feet, plays it to Lunt. Here's Sinfield, drop of the shoulder. Goes in bravely where it hurts again. Gets the ball away before he hits the ground with the ball carrying arm. Zach Hardacre. But well, there's one man in the lead shirt that can really turn it around, and that's Rob Burrow. And here he is. He turned it round last year against the Saints. He gets the ball away to Maguire, who finds Ablett. And Ablett goes inside one, Ratchford's on his back. It's a mixed match in terms of weight. Oh, he can't do that. Ablett shouldn't be doing that, pushing Rushwood off him. Oh, and now Leeds have got the penalty. Oh, that's a controversial one as well. Westwood having a little bit of a word with the official and saying, hang on, I got pushed away. Silverwood saying he should have got out of the way. So here come Leeds as they turn the screw and Ryan Hall. They're calling for reinforcements on this right-hand side. And Peacock. Oh, that was... Well, he utilised the dummy runner there. That looked like a shepherd to me. They've got away with it. Sinfield on his toes. Already scored one. Gets the ball away, but Warrington have got it back. He was looking for the offload, and he could see the exasperation on the Sinfield's face. He was looking to his teammates and saying, there was nobody there, you should have helped me. Ratchford will have a scamper. So important now not to give away a silly penalty. Cooper again takes it forward. Solid hit by Stevie Ward. Oh, and here goes Riley, stepping his way through the challenges. Eventually, Peacock gets him down. But that's a great field position. It's, it's with uh, Paul Wood. He's looking to offload again. Can't, here comes the last. This will be a high one again. Breers has got time. Oh, and Breers has fooled us all. Knock on or forward pass, take your pick. Doesn't matter. He may have fooled everybody. But he gave himself a, a hard time. I'm not so sure that Tony Smith would have wanted that, but it's a four-point lead. So they realise Leeds have to uh, chase this game. Tight as a drum, isn't it? Tight as a drum as Burrow bounces off one, bounces off two, gives it to Jamie Jones Buchanan. Three are there as a reception committee. Down he goes, tackle number three. Lunt to Peacock to Sinfield. Sinfield looking for support, it's there from Burrow just about. He hangs on under intense pressure from Myler. Lunt to Maguire. Maguire to Watkins. Watkins gets it away to Ward. And down he goes. Plenty of time left, 25 minutes. This match still to be won. Maguire shaped a kick. Gave it to Griffin, gave it to Sinfield, gave it to Jamie Jones Buchanan. Trapped though by the defence, Warrington have got it back, 
Little things in big games win matches. Chris Hill has charged down the kick there. Danny Maguire had the signal from Ryan Hall. Please put it in the corner. The prop Chris Hill has come out and put pressure on Danny Maguire, forced him to shift the ball, forced him to change their plan. Look at the effort from the big fella. Well, that made the Leeds play break down and was solved by the Warrington Wolves. Well done to Chris Hill. He has had a fantastic season, hasn't he, Chris Hill? And uh, he crowns an astonishing first year at Warrington, actually, by appearing in this grand final. Played in Super League all those years ago for the Lee Centurions when they were in. Warrington just appeared to have a little bit more composure than the opposite. Monaghan will get the kick away, right down the middle of the ground. Ryan Hall allows it to bounce, he knows the chase was a little slow in coming forward, but there they are now. It's been a great feature. Tony Smith has worked hard and ensuring that the Wolves, every kick, the chase, they really do work hard. And uh, coach in the front row, captain almost immediately behind him. Steve-O said in the first half, we've never had a sin binning, we've never had a sending off in a grand final. We don't want one of those. We've also never had a golden point in the playoffs. We'd love one of those. This could go on to midnight for me. It's sensational. Oh! And that seemed to be coming out of the backhand of Carl Ablett, but it's a penalty to lead for a high shot. I thought he'd given the forward pass. So did I. Forward pass. Debatable. By the way, they've got the penalty. They'll get another 30, 35 metres downfield. Well, they... There's nothing forward about that. No, they're chasing the game. They have to do it. He, he has said there's a high tackle on Carl Ablett. We, we can't see that. All the cameras we've got here can't see it. But what it means is Leeds now have got a great attacking position. They need to try and convert sometime soon. Oh, perhaps. Yeah, Breers. Breers with a slap. Yep. My apologies to Silverwood. Richard Silverwood. Tremendous. Ooh. Tremendous defence. Great attack. Both sides. Sad there's going to have to be a loser tonight. They've given us a treat. Here's another penalty for Leeds under the Warrington sticks. Boy, can they handle this pressure? Well, if they do, if they handle this and they survive this, they believe they go on and win the double. It's Ablett. Another spluck in the face from Breers. He's been immense, hasn't he? Carl Ablett out on that left centre. He didn't like that again, Carl Ablett. He's asking the referee about the bang in the face. This is Lulawai. Long, long season. They must be out on their feet. could have picked from and from this it's magical the delayed pass from lunch is outstanding Applet, i think he went straight through breers bang get out of the way he's had a magnificent game as Applet, both in defense and attack and he also comes up with the big tries in the big moments he got a try in last year's grand final victory. He got a try in last year's cup final. He got a try in the World Club Challenge. And he's got a try in the grand final 2012. And suddenly Leeds believe that history might be repeating itself again. Well, no wonder if this fellow's got any problems, they keep him out at all costs. This, for a two-point lead, two-point ball game courtesy of this man who allowed his captain he scored the try 
And as Eddie has already mentioned, Kevin Sinfield, he is on fire with the kicking boots. They're back in the game. No longer are they chasing. As we cross into the last quarter of the match. The Leeds had some excellent field position, didn't they? We're talking about being close to your opponent's try line in this game. But you have to score points when you're down that part of the field. One of the reasons why the Rhinos won the grand final last year was because of an outstanding hooker called Danny Badiris. Sean Munter started on the bench, will come on and fulfil that great role. Nice vision and creation and a lovely line from Carl Adler. You ask what it is about the Leeds Rhinos at this time of the year, Eddie, and why they're so successful. You've just seen it. They haven't scored since the 29th minute. They've gone 31 minutes toe-to-toe -to -toe with Warrington, and at the same time, see the Wolves score twice, bring themselves back into the game, and actually go into the ascendancy. The Rhinos did not let it affect them. They've dragged themselves back in front now. That is wonderful champion play from the champion side. Rob Burrow lifted his legs then, so the referee had to shout, held. Maguire looking to create some magic, Warrington desperate to make sure he doesn't. Gonna Here's the good, last. Going to be a good kick as well. And he's gone for a 40-20 attempt, but Hodgson has moved across quickly and cut out the option. And the chase is good from Stevie Ward. Well, we've had some memorable, memorable nights at this place on Grand Final Night, and we've got another one this evening. You know, Warrington an excellent prepared side. I wonder whether they've discussed or planned for being at the hour mark, two points behind in a tight game here in the grand final, and just how they're going to cope, you know, because you would suspect they feel under more pressure. I mean, got knocked out by uh, Leeds in last year's one round before the uh, grand final, they're in a similar situation. Have they learned the lesson from 12 months ago? Warrington crowd screaming for a penalty as Harrison drives it in. There comes the last now. So again, the kicker, Breers with the angled crossfield kick, gobbled up by Sinfield, given then to Hardacre. Length of the field last week, not tonight so far, Waterhouse saw to that. And it just shows you that Kevin Sinfield, probably watching the video time and time again, of the, the kick from Lee Breers, he does that, goes out onto that right hand side on that blind side and brings it back in front of the post, and he read it perfectly. Blow for Leeds, uh, Stevie Ward's just come off, he's holding his shoulder after a tackle about uh, two or three minutes ago. But uh, Delaney's not a bad replacement, is he? Great offload. Certainly was. Lunt, he's a terrier. He's only on loan from Huddersfield, this fellow, Sean Lunt. What a fairy tale it's been for him. Certainly has, and uh, it, it surprised me that Huddersfield even allowed him to do that. Oh! This could be pressure. He's done well, the done well to get out of trouble, done well to get out of trouble there. Yeah. But look where they turn the ball over, four metres away from the Warrington line, Sinfield clatters into Monaghan. I dropped those kicks throughout, throughout my career, Eddie, Eddie, and I still get nervous when I see them go up. Such a difficult kick when the kicker hits it properly. Torpedo bomb, we know how good Brett Hodgson is at pouching them, and I guess he shows the quality of the kick that somebody of Brett Hodgson's ability was unable to catch it. Here comes Ben Harrison then, going straight at Sinfield. The captain seems to be A-OK. -okay. Harrison plays the ball to Hyam. Here is Hill. Peacock stops him just inside his own half. Oh, on the problem, last. problem for Peacock there. It looks as though he's twitching the knee. Up high off the boot of Breers. Into the arms of Zach Hardacre. Well, Peacock is just plodding his way back. He's not... Uh, Making a great rush to get the defensive line. Eddie, that's not a plod, that's a I can assure you on that. He has taken it to... We often refer to the final quarter. How much strength, how much energy is left in these players' bodies. So when you think that uh, Leeds could not have played any more matches than they have played this year, they've played one more than all the rest because they played in the World Club Challenge. The Warrington have gone pretty close, they've only played one less than that. They didn't play in the World Club Challenge this year. Boy, they both want to play in the World Club Challenge next year. That's why they're here to the grand final tonight. Winners will be playing the Melbourne Storm all being well. Finds its way somehow to Sinfield again. Rashford got to him. Yeah, good pressure as well. And we'll Sinfield has got again. it again and gets the kick away. And he won't mind that going dead in goal. It's oh, set up in the in goal earlier. This no, it's not. It's going to go dead in goal. Touching goal. Ooh, that could have gone all over the point.
talk about the second effort, and he, he really has. I mean, it, it was a heck of a, a clash, wasn't it? We're getting into that nervy territory, Steve-O, on the clock. If people start focusing on the clocks, so the players will need to know what time is left in this game. We have 15 minutes, but once we get to that 10-minute left mark, let me tell you, you start getting nervy, and you maybe start trying to chase the game a little harder. He's not not done. Done. It doesn't matter, they've got it back. It was a massive hit by Lugawai oh. and Mickey Hyam. Mickey Hyam looked at the, the touch judge and said, surely that was a foul. But was the it? big prop forward just ricocheted oh. into him. It was like the oh. one of Rumbler that he hit on Hodgson, didn't it? They got the ball then and they scored oh. shortly after. That was ruled out by the video referee. Well, they can't look at that now because we're two playing the balls further on. So that's all for uh, academic argument. Here is Maguire. He finds Sinfield. Sinfield gives it to Watkins. Watkins gets it away to Ben Jones. Oh, forward. forward. There's been some calls for forward passes tonight, hasn't there? Yeah. I think majority. And that was, that I, think, was. I think the majority Eddie, that Ted Silverwood has picked up has been a okay, but that was a hit. Boom. Kai Lulawa. You're right, Phil, it's exactly similar, isn't it, to the Wembley hit. And that produced, that was on Hodgson. It produced a try that was chalked off after about a two-minute de deliberation by the video ref. And the game then went away, didn't it, from Leeds? Warrington scored ten points in ten minutes, and it was all, all sort of over. They scored ten points in ten minutes at Wembley on the back of three goal-line dropouts that they forced the Rhinos to make. But they clearly can't get to that end of the field to look to try and get a repeat set, and uh, not so much of this second half has been played down on the right end of the pitch. It's concentration time now, and uh, discipline will come into it. Remember, Warrington gave away those silly penalties that allowed Leeds to take control of the game again. But this is not over by any imagination. But, Warrington, Chris Hill. but Warrington can't get in a good field position. Breers, they might now with Myler. They might now with Waterhouse. Oh, knock on by Hodgson. Was it knocked on by Leeds? I think it was. And the referee has actually just asked Phil Bentham, the video referee, to have a look at this. I think it's touched by Leeds. Is he going to make the tackle? I'm sure he's attempted to make the tackle there. Yeah, well, the ball's come away, Phil, hasn't it? So as Delaney, yeah, he's Delaney's touched, touched, it. touched it, yeah, that'll be a knock-on. It should be Warrington head and feed. It's, so, yeah. it's, it's going to be Warrington's head and feed. And to be fair, I've got to, I've got to praise the official Silverwood for. for Let's get it spot on. You, you talk about Warrington needing field position. What, what they have is game breakers that can break from their end of the field. So don't worry about where Warrington have the ball. They've got people willing to, and able to go the length of the field. Hyam pushed it. Jamie Jones Buchanan out of the way then. Now then, this is a, a crucial set of six coming up for Warrington. This is Griggs. It's going to take something outstanding to get through, and you, you've got to start looking at the fact that Stephen Ratford may have that ability. This is Chris Hill. This is Chris Hill. Oh, he's lost it. Oh, it's come out in a strip. One on one. Six to go. The Warrington crowd rise. The Warrington players grow a second leg, a third leg. Here is Waterhouse. He's lost Drop. it. He has lost it. And Leeds Lee celebrate. Leeds celebrate that like that is the match winning try on this night. You can see the nervous twitch on the face of the coach, Tony Smith. Well, there's the, there's the knock on that's given. Was there fingers in? Well, what was, was the first one? Was that knocked yeah, out? It was knocked out, no doubt about it. They've had the rubber the green again. I'm not sure if there was... I think that's a responsibility of the ball carrier there. Well, Callum Watkins has redeemed himself. Ryan Atkins ran over the, the top of him to score his try. Well, he's just shut down Trent Waterhouse and got his team the ball back. This one is incredibly difficult to, to call. We've got 11 minutes left in it. And I think there's more tries than this. Well, fatigue will surely play a part. Yeah, but when you've got those two points in front, Eddie, <laughs> you go through the pain barrier. You go through everything. I, I think it's next score wins, Eddie. The next team to score in this game win the match, and uh, well, Leeds don't have to do, but if they do, then certainly it will be the end. I think this was a loose carry here. Go, good line. That's why Leeds have got this ball back with Maguire. That's great tackling by uh, Michael Monaghan. Now then, Sinfield, the kick. 
He it's gave that as much as he could, and it turns Joel Monaghan around. Look where he'll pick it up. Watch the chase like. Pretty good from three. Monaghan's really quick. Here's Hodgson. Great oh. tackle by Callum oh. Watkins. Sure was. Could have been penalised. Had a little second go at it. Atkins leads tackling now like Terriers. Yeah, and they know. Two points, ten minutes away from another grand final success. A record sixth. An incredible feat. Three, move, Cal. And as you say, they've got to make go, sure that defence is solid. But they've got to get, make sure they don't give away a silly penalty. Four. Great offload by Hill. He finds Hyam. And Hyam has seen the gap. And Callum Watkins again to the rescue for Ralph for the Rhinos. Myler scampers away, gives it to Hodgson. Hodgson gets the ball away despite the challenge from Peacock. Oh, Ben Harrison's knocked on. Leeds have got it back. Great work by Monaghan. It looked as though they got the overlap. The big fella Harrison couldn't handle it. Now it's field position time. No panic. Just control. The clock is counting down, and Leeds have a two-point advantage. They're in possession with Delaney. Sinfield looks to the right, goes to the left with Zach Hardacre. Move Burrow. Scampering run from Burrow. Gets the ball to Delaney. Here is Watkins. And Callum Watkins comes inside. Finds Zach Hardacre standing. He dumps it to Maguire. Maguire doesn't know which way to go, fires it wide in the end to Ablett, gets it out to Ryan Hall, and Ryan Hall scores in the corner for Leeds. The fairy tale is alive. Unbelievable, this team. Fifth last year, fifth this year, and Brian McDermott is on the verge of another very special night. He said all year history could not repeat itself. History is, and Ryan Hall has just scored the try. Tremendous effort, keeping that ball alive, but it came about from the error. And Warrington coughed up possession. Rears back on the inside. And the big fella, Ben Harrison, could not keep control of it. And beep beep, he's done it again, they kept it alive. This is beautiful work. Callum Watkins has come of age, did very well Maguire. He knew that his captain had gone forward, didn't want to use him as a shepherd. But Ryan Hall, Ablett, again, Ablett's been outstanding. Unbelievable stuff here. Carl Ablett. He's not really a centre, he's a second row. Well, that was a big moment for Ryan Hall, his first try in these playoffs. This is massive for Kevin Sinfield and Leeds. 21 from 21. The King of Headingley has done it again. They are champions, Eddie, and they got some champion players. Carl Ablett's a second rower, but we've been playing a lot of his rugby league in the centre position, and he's developing into that position. What he does to Joel Monaghan here, how he fixes him and lets Ryan Hall out on his outside is top-class centre play from a man more readily associated with the second row. Well done, Carl, Carl Abbott. Leeds Rhinos, well, they're certainly in the box seat now. Well, they and are. Warrington, but... Warrington have gone for the short kick-off and they've come up with the possession with Hodgson and he's played the ball to Monaghan and here is Ben Harrison. This is 27 years ago, Warrington last won the title. This is where they've got to take them on. Well, they might as well throw caution yes. to the wind now. As they mentioned, remember, Ratchford, his ability, chip over the top last week, can you remember? He's got to produce something like that. This is Hill, who'll play the ball to Michael Monaghan. Myler finds Breers, Breers gives it to Ratchford. The man who tormented the Saints. Still, still, penalty to Warrington. Crucial call, penalty on the Leeds line. Warrington looking to respond immediately to that sucker punch. Here is Ben Westwood. And how important could that conversion right from the outside there from Kevin Sinfield on the Ryan Hall try? That could prove to be the difference in the end. Here's Hill. He slipped the net. 
He's given it to Myla. Myla's jinking. And Myla goes down in the tackle from Ablett again. He's run his blood to water, Carl Ablett. Michael Monaghan gets the ball away to Breers. Breers gives it wide. That was knocked on by Ratchford. It's surely going to be play on. No, the referee will bring him back. Well, Ratchford got the hand to the ball first, so that should be head and feet. It is. To Leeds. This is the hand there, Ratchford. As soon as it hits Hall, that means that it's a, a knock on from Warrington. There it is. So, therefore, it's the first knock on. It'll be. It should be head and feet. It is, it is. he's given it. Yeah. He's attempted to pass it on, isn't he? One motion, flick it on to the winger outside him. Good work, though, wasn't it, by Ryan Hall? Put, applied that pressure, knew he had to flick it on Ratchford. Trouble is, he flicked it, but it went forward. Eight points, five minutes. And you want to close out a game? Would anybody prefer to have a, a person like Kevin Sidfield? Does anybody you'd pick ahead of him to close out a game, to be able to kick his team into field position? and just wear the opposition down and, and make sure the clock counts down to 80 minutes. But He's look, an expert at it. But look at Warrington, they are hunting the mistake. Peacock hands on. Four Peacock. and a half to go. Five minutes ago, Peacock could hardly walk. And yet, he has got up and said, give it to me, I'll take them on. He's had a fine game as well, hasn't he, Delaney? He has. This is an, an amazing feat by this Rhino outfit. But when you think they had Wakefield at home, they had to go to Catalan, they had to go to Wigan. They've come here on the back of all of that. And Burrow just thumps the ball downfield. This could be a 40-20, this, this could be a 40-20, this. And this could be the end of Warrington's hopes. He wants to check, he wants to check. It's fine. If you put on the line, is that in or out, Mike? We'll wait and see, he's got it. He's no. not on the line. I think it's just this side of the line. Centimetres. I think if you're on the line, it's not a 40-20. I think he's just this close. And there's the official. That little fella's kick there has probably retained the trophy. And those fans, they're fully aware of that. What a time to come up with a kick. It's a champion play, Steve-O. An absolute champion play. He knows he's got those players in his side, Brian McDermott, that can do that. They can pull out magic. We're all guilty, I guess, of writing them off from time to time. I thought at half-time Warrington would have more in them. How wrong it proved to be. Would you like to play poker against Brian McDermott? I wouldn't like to play anything <laughs> against Brian McDermott. He saw that, that was his reaction to the 40-20, and he hardly blinked. Bailey! A try now, and Leeds retained the trophy for sure peacock ten grand finals for jamie peacock spirit of rugby league award on monday mcguire all they have to do is just dribble this ball into the in goal area will they go for one sinfield shaped to do something sinfield takes it down just dribble it in over the in goal area Burrow gives it to Maguire, he flicks it into the in-goal area, and that's not the best. But time's against Warrington, three minutes, eight points. Is it possible? Anything's possible in this game, Eddie, but I tell you what, Brian McDermott will not be happy with that final kick. They got eight points in two minutes in the first half, so anything is possible. Yeah, of course it is, but he, he knows that, that that kick should have been on the ground, not to be diffused. I think a score or a penalty in this set is going to be necessary for the Wolves to have any chance in this game. Well, they've spun it wide, and here comes Ratchford. And Ratchford gets, almost gets the ball away. Time is the enemy as much as Leeds for Warrington. There's a punch-up in back play, by the way. Well, they're missing half their team. They're trying to win a game, and they've gone, they've gone for a ball with Ryan Bailey. Well, well, well done, Ryan Bailey. You've suckered in half of the Warrington side. There was five players. Well, Bailey's gone over and offered the, the handshake. I don't think it was, it's... Mike. I think he was being sarcastic with something he was saying or pointing at his boots. Well, you'd be delighted if you're Ryan Bailey. He's tied up five of the attackers. Well, it certainly caught Myler, that's for sure. Myler didn't like it. And neither did four of Myler's teammates. And that's why they threw the ball out and into touch.
and then he wouldn't let go of him, that was the problem, so that some of his teammates eventually went to get him dressed a bit later on. Well, there's a right schmuzzle going on while all this is on, and there's nobody stood out on the left wing. Look at that! I know, they had five players in and around that fella, Bailey. I think, I think he was high on the... Uh, it looked at anyway on first look at that picture. There was certainly a shake of the head as Myler as uh, the tackle came in. Well, this is at the jumper time, isn't it? About eight points in two minutes. They can't win now. No. And Peacock will take it in. Yeah, he knows it. Can you believe this? In history has repeated itself again. Eight playoff wins in a row for Leeds. A record and back to back titles from fifth. Unbelievable. That'll be a knock on all the forward pass either way. Warrington will get the last throw of the dice. And even though we're entering the last minute, Kevin Sinfield is still I think Warrington... asking his team to come and come again. Well, I think Warrington have, have, have given up the goal, Teddy, because they, they didn't even run to form that scrum. No. They know that eight points is impossible with only seconds remaining. And listen to the crowd. We are Leeds Rhinos, and boy, they should feel proud. This has been a wonderful effort. I'm just so glad and happy that I am here to witness history in the making from a team called the Rhinos. Will Warrington have the last word? No, they won't. Nicky Hyam puts the ball down. And Lee Brazier's dream has gone west. They've waited 15 years to get to a grand final. Only two clubs previously have won on their first visit to the Theatre of Dreams. And Jamie Peacock is playing in his 10th grand final. And the celebrations have started. The Rhinos counting down to back-to-back -back titles. What an effort from this team. An outstanding group of young men, said Brian McDermott. Three titles in a hundred years for Leeds in the old days. Six in nine seasons under the captaincy of Kevin Sinfield. Unreal. And look at him. Yeah. Look at the delight for Kevin Sinfield. And Never were... close to being a man of steel. Amazing, isn't it? And yet he leads this team to glory, glory, hallelujah. Well, it was solid as steel tonight. And remember, he got a huge knock but they did not want to take him from the field of play. That's how influential this man is to this Rhinos outfit. And well done, Brian McDermott. Tony Smith says congratulations. Two great coaches. It's been a classic game. Loved every single minute of it. Well, incredible, absolutely incredible, and of course, on a night like this, you look for a man-of-the-match performance. Leeds have got them all over the place, but Sinfield's won it for the second time. He's with Rod. Kevin, well done. Allow me to be the first to congratulate you on captaining six grand final winning teams and winning the Harry Sunderland Award for the second time. Just sum up your emotions for us. Um, where were we a month ago? We were dead and buried. We got a towel in Huddersfield. And... Uh, we couldn't have written this again. To come here against the great side and be able to grind that out again. You know, I think our boys have really dug in for a month now. Wakefield, Catlin away, Wigan away, and this. Four great teams, and uh, we needed to bring our running legs the last month. Our big men were outstanding, our back three. Again, the last month's been awesome. You know, I'd like to thank our fans. They've been huge this last month. Well, both you and the team had to pick yourself off the canvas, metaphorically and literally tonight. I mean, you were not cold at one point. How did you get up from that, and how do you maintain the belief despite going behind in the second half? Uh, we've been here before, we've been behind. When they scored first right at the start of the game, I think Jones has said, we've been here before, fellas, we never scored first, so... There's some belief about the boys, and, and uh, for us to come through that, and, you know, like you said, when they scored at the start of that second half, he started to think of Saints last year when they went in front, but... You know, thankfully, we find a way to win, and... Um, 
this place has been really kind to us. It's an incredible side, isn't it? An incredible team, an incredible club, and you keep proving it year on year. It's special, the club's special. Not, not just the players, not just the coaching team. The backroom staff, our fans, our families, they don't stop believing, you know, we're getting good ideas throughout the year and things aren't going well, they stick with us and, you know, they're, they're entitled along that way to have a crack at us, but those people close will stick with us and this is, this is for them tonight. Well done, Kevin, you and the club have got what they deserve tonight. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, Kevin Sinfield referring to the fact, and uh, that's a nice gesture from uh, Tony Smith, who, of course, led Leeds and Sinfield to two grand final successes, and Adrian Morley played for them in 1998 as well. Willie really Poaching, another ex-Leeds star on the Warrington scene. Kevin Sinfield referring in that interview to where were they a month ago when they went to Huddersfield and they were pommeled? They were 48-24 40, uh, for the 12 men of the Huddersfield Giants. But they've come back and they've won this grand final. And this fella doesn't know how to lose them. Kylie Lulawai with Rod. Kylie, well done. Terrific performance. Terrific fight back from going behind at the start of the second half. Just some of how you're feeling. Oh, yeah, it's been... I don't like the word surreal, but it feels like that. You know, it's been, been a, such an up-and-down season, same as last year. I mean, I couldn't believe we beat Wigan last week and then to come here and do this, it's, it's pretty special. How important was that big hit you put on in the second half there to, to get the field position and the ball back? No, I, think, I think I just closed my eyes and just, just came out, so I don't know what happened there. Can't really, can't really claim that on a hooker. It's an amazing performance to win it from fifth two years running, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, we've got a, big, we've got a tight group here, you know, we've done, been through a lot together. We've, been, we've rid that rid the wave, you know, up and downs, and um, to be able to come out here and do it again, uh, something special. Man. Well done, Carly, enjoy the celebrations, thank you. Thanks, mate. And look at that the captain and coach the emotion of this night the emotion of this game glory on one side despair on the other fantastic stuff for Leeds and uh, Tony Smith congratulating uh, each and every one of the opposition as he does because I think he knows as we all do that we have witnessed a very special match here tonight Lee Breers Lee Breers will have to wait a little longer but the Leeds Rhino supporters, I don't think they, they must be pinching themselves. Highly Lou, I just said everything there Eddie, I couldn't believe it that we beat Wigan last week, he used those words himself they have, they've even surpassed what their own expectations were. They're a champion side. They've proved it to us again. Not that they need to, but they have. Week, at, week after week and year after year, they keep coming back. Warrington so good throughout the season. Tony Smith was worried. He didn't want his team to have to lose a grand final to go and win one. And it's disappointing to see a warrior like this having to lose, but somebody has to go out on the, on the wrong side. Indeed so. He's uh, with Rod, Adrian Morley. Adrian, thanks very much for taking the trouble to join us. I know it's a very difficult time for you and the Warrington players. You've been here and won, you've been here at loss. Just some about your feeling tonight, because twice you were in front, you couldn't get the job done. Yeah, we just weren't good enough tonight. Uh, I thought it was a great achievement from the boys to actually make the grand final. And disappointing tonight, but Leeds are uh, they're not the champions for nothing. They come here, defended the title very well. And I think to, to win, the, to win the, the Super League from fifth is a fantastic achievement, so I'll take me off to Leeds. Fair play to you. Do you think that experience they've got, I've been here so many times, I know you've been here before, but so many of your boys haven't, did that make the difference, do you think? I think it helped Leeds' preparation, but we come here to play and I don't think we got out of class by any means. I thought the game could have gone either way. There's a few decisions that, um, you know, possibly could have gone our way, which didn't, but as I say, um, Leeds were, were worthy winners on the night, so we've just got to uh, say well done and we'll look forward to next year. You do indeed, which is finally, I mean, there is an old adage that says you've got to lose one to win one. I think it's an Australian adage, it's scant translation tonight, but it hasn't been a disaster season. You've won the Challenge Cup and come very close. Yeah, well, that's right. I mean, as I say, it's an achievement to make the grand final. It's the first time Warrington as a club have made it, so everyone involved at the club should be proud. Uh, you know, obviously very disappointed, but hopefully this will we'll, we'll grow from this experience and go on better next year. Thanks, Adrian, appreciate it. God, thank you. And the uh, referee, Richard Silverwood, and his touch judges, they pick up their mementos, and also uh, Ben Thaler, reserve referee, and Phil Bentham's at the back of the line there. There he is, he is the video referee tonight. And his advice was timely for Richard Silverwood. So it's the losers who come up first, 
disconsolate, disappointed. They won the cup against Leeds, and Leeds have come back, and they've taken the grand final away from them. They've had a fantastic season. But on the night, you have to play your best game of the year. And Leeds have done that. Not many happy faces there, as you would expect. Nicky Hine was in tears. And the coach was magnanimous as well. He went round each and every one of the Leeds players and the coaches. Of course, he knows them so well. Jimmy Lowes was his assistant at Warrington. Brian McDermott was his assistant at Huddersfield and at Headingley. Yeah, it's and a uh, tonight, the Sorcerer has been outdone by The Apprentice. Yeah, you'd have to say that as well. And we must congratulate the, the way that Brian McDermott has dug deep yet again. He had the faith, and boy, these guys had the faith in the coach, and more importantly, they had faith in their ability, and it was displayed tonight. There's Carl Ablett, who I thought was sensational. Yes, he must be. Uh, he must have gone must very, have been very close, close to being man of yeah. the match. Take nothing away from Sinfield. His kicking was outstanding after the opening two sets of six. Well, they got it wrong, didn't they? But they soon rectified it, and that's what you have to do. So to another one's champions. ring for all these players. I mean, they're running out of fingers. Yeah. They'll be putting them on the toes next. They are an amazing club. We've heard them say, and give credit to the staff off the field. To be as consistent as they have for the last decade, you have to give a lot of credit, I think, to the man at the top, Gary Hetherington. Year after year, they seem to make more good decisions than bad ones. And uh, players like Stevie Ward coming through again, they've got a lot of good young talent there, mixed with some wonderful experience that give them some great examples on and off the field. And Callum Watkins, my one of favourite players of the season. And here he is again, Kevin Sinfield. He has done this many times before. It's been a glorious decade as Leeds captain for him, and he'll talk to the crowd before he picks up that prize piece of silver. One incredible month it's been for our boys. It's been a bit of a journey this year, but uh, what an incredible night. Can I pay tribute to Warrington? I think you're a fantastic team. You're a great club, and the All of Rugby League think a lot about you. To the match officials, thank you. To Sky Sports and the BBC for your continued coverage. To our club sponsors. Leeds Building Society, Leeds Met, Hesco, Quest, ISC. Thanks for your support. To all our families, our pl fellow players, squad members, coaching staff, everybody who works at the club, to all our fans. We're a special, special bunch. Thank you. The 2012. They are a special bunch. And Leeds Rhinos have done it again. They are champions in 2012. And fully deserved, it. Remember when we interviewed the skipper, Kevin Sinfield, last week? And he modestly just said, I'm just doing my job. Well, he's done his job to the best of his ability. And that's the reason why those fans are cheering. And the players will now enjoy every single minute as the skipper takes that silverware they said they didn't want to let it go and boy tonight they proved that they want to keep it for a long long time well the thunderclaps in the background are shaking old trafford to its foundations a special moment for a special bunch to use kevin sinfield's own words what a special bloke Brian McDermott is. A hero on the field in his playing days. And he has had his critics. There were some at Leeds who didn't like him. I bet they've fallen in love with him over the past two years. Let's hear from him. He's talking to Rod. Brian, well done. Even now, you're only allowing yourself the very slightest smile. Go on, betray your emotions for us. I have none. I don't know. It must be a, a 
absolutely proud as punster, mustn't you? Because this has been an incredible victory, hasn't it? Uh, Give me a moment. We had to. Uh, we created history last year, doing it from fifth. Uh, but the route that we've come through to get it done here today, not just the playoffs, but once again we've had some games where you can't work out what we're trying to achieve. Uh, and then, you know, to uh, to lose at Wembley and didn't really have a crack at Wembley and Warrington were brilliant, they were great that day. And then to get, get in the playoffs and then to uh, every game we've played, there's been such an amount of pressure on every single game. When Leeds lose, everybody knows about it. When losing style, everybody knows about it. Uh, the pressure on the players to come and to uh, come up with the goods, it's immense. They're, uh, they ought to make statues out of every one of them, they're brilliant. Have you produced two better back-to-back -back performances? Or have you ever been associated with two better back-to-back -back performances than win at Wigan and win here against a very good Warrington side? The whole playoffs, I mean, you throw Catalans into that, the Catalans game, it was just... That was a that was a crazy game. And we had so much pressure from Wayfield at home, so I... I can't say enough of the players, I can't say enough of the staff. My mate Jimmy Laws is a big part of it, Jason Davidson, they're huge. But the players, the, the players are going to have a huge amount of credit. It's just, uh, it's unbelievable working with them. The belief is absolutely incredible, isn't it? Even if you go behind, first minute, last minute, it doesn't matter. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's, and they handle that. They're under pressure all the time. They handle that. They lead, they lead a tough life, and when it gets tough, they come into their own. The fans have been absolutely brilliant this year. We've had some turbulent times, but they've been brilliant this year, and they're stuck right behind us. Well done. Enjoy it, Brian. Thank you very much. I'll try my best. Thank you. I'm sure he will. Brian McDermott will savour this moment, and rightly so, as we all should. And, uh, you know, it has been a remarkable summer of sport, hasn't it? The Olympics, the Para-Olympics, the Wigan fan, Bradley Wiggins, winning gold, winning the Tour de France, giving the joining Jack sign on the winner's podium in the Champs-Élysées. We've seen Andy Murray winning the US Open. We saw Europe lift the Ryder Cup in the most unbelievable fashion last weekend. And tonight, the Super League has produced something that has got everybody here wondering just how far they can go in the years to come. It has ranked with anything that has been performed on a sporting field this year. Well done to them, well done to the Rhinos. They will enjoy this moment.